Hello and welcome to this whiteboard update on the treatment of chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL. I'm Dr. John Allen, an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Hematology and Medical Oncology at Weill Cornell Medicine. Dramatic progress has been made in our understanding of the clinical, biological, and molecular heterogeneity of CLL. Despite this, treatment challenges remain, particularly in patients with high-risk disease. This whiteboard update helps address the question of how we can integrate the latest knowledge into clinical practice to help guide treatment choices for our patients with high-risk CLL. Here I'll discuss the newer CLL therapies, including their mechanism of action, and how we can develop individualized treatment plans for our patients at risk for progression. I will begin by discussing the mechanisms of action of small molecule inhibitors of BTK and PI3 kinase delta. Antagonism of the B cell receptor signaling pathway has dramatically improved outcomes for patients with CLL. During this section, we'll focus on the mechanisms of action of both Bruton's tyrosine kinase, or BTK, and phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase, or PI3 kinase inhibitors to better understand their effectiveness and side effects. BTK and PI3 kinase are critical enzymes in the signaling cascade of the B cell receptor. Activation of this pathway ultimately leads to activation of MAPK, ERK pathways, NF-kappa B, as well as AKT, which promote survival and proliferation in CLL cells. While there are many BTK and PI3 kinase inhibitors currently in development for hematologic malignancies, only ibrutinib and idelalisib are currently FDA approved for use in CLL respectively. Next, we'll focus on BTK inhibition. Current BTK inhibitors all work via the same mechanism by binding to cysteine 481 within the kinase pocket and disrupting ATP binding, thus blocking enzyme phosphorylation and activation. Ibrutinib, among other BTK inhibitors, are relatively unique in that they covalently bind to the enzyme's kinase pocket, constantly preventing kinase activation and permanently shutting off the signaling capabilities of the enzyme. This allows ibrutinib to remain effective throughout the day, despite a short half-life and once-a-day dosing. In order for the cell to re-establish BCR signaling, it needs to regenerate new protein, which is then promptly inhibited by the next day's dosing, thus consistently providing greater than 90% occupancy of available BTK at the current 420 mg once-daily dose. Hence, ibrutinib is now approved in relapse refractory settings and as a treatment option in frontline CLL for all patients, but should be considered the current standard of care as frontline therapy in patients with 17p deletion. Ibrutinib is very potent with an IC50 of 0.5 nanomolars and has a restricted interaction with only a limited number of other kinases. While potent and selective, it does inhibit other TEK family kinases, which BTK is a member of, such as TEK, ITK, BMX, as well as other non-TEK enzymes like EGFR. It is this off-target inhibition and importance of BTK and other pathways outside of the BCR signaling which result in the well-documented lymphocytosis via inhibition of CXCR4 signaling and also is why we see mild side effects with the drug such as bleeding secondary to inhibition of TEK as well as BTK in platelets and rash and diarrhea versus off-target inhibition of EGFR within the skin and GI tract. Moving on to the other class of BCR antagonists currently clinically available are those that inhibit members of the phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase family of enzymes. This class of enzymes includes four isoforms, alpha, beta, delta, and gamma, which each have varying expression in different organ systems and cell types. Hematopoietic cells, like lymphocytes, express primarily the delta isoform, which play a prominent role and BCR activation by producing phospholipids which interact with BTK, enabling activation and signal transduction downstream upon B cell receptor antigen stimulation. Additionally, PI3 kinase delta can activate AKT and mTOR pathways, and in CLL, this promotes survival and proliferation. This class of drugs includes FDA-approved inhibitors such as idelalisib, which is used alone or in combination with rituximab for treating older patients without 17p deletion or CLL patients with 17p deletion in relapse refractory settings. 
Idelalisib is effective in CLL, but its use is complicated by immune-related toxicities and significant infectious risks. A new PI3 kinase inhibitor, Umbralisib, currently in clinical development, has proven effective and displays a safety profile distinct from other PI3 kinase inhibitors in the class. This molecule has a unique molecular structure different than previous PI3 kinase inhibitors, with better selectivity for the PI3 kinase delta isoform. Additionally, it is the only inhibitor in the class which can inhibit casein kinase 1 epsilon, which is involved in regulation of MYC, BCL2, and cyclin D1. The safety profile differences, which are not entirely elucidated, may in part be related to umbralisib's effect on T regulatory cells and anti inflammatory effects via casein kinase 1 epsilon inhibition by blocking non canonical WIMP5 signaling. In summary, both BTK and PI3 kinase inhibitors disrupt three key malignant B cell processes. They inhibit proliferation and survival, they inhibit adhesion, and they modulate chemotaxis and trafficking. In the next whiteboard video, we'll turn our attention to anti-CD20 antibodies.